By the way, do you remember in our in your classes in primary school, do you remember the scientific method? I think it was in high school, right? And we learned scientific method. Do you remember what are the steps of the scientific method? Like, have an idea? Yeah? What's the first step? Remember? Start with the letter O of observation. Exactly. You observe the phenomena. You try to understand what's going on. And then, once you observe, then you propose a hypothesis. Excellent. Which really is a way of assuming, you know, if I do this, this could be the result. What's the third step? The experiment. You, know, you go again, you do your research, which means that you, you might run experiments and so forth. Once you run your experiment, you came up with some analysis and then your conclusions. Very simple, right? We all learned that process at, at, at high school or primary school, right? The question that I have for you guys, why don't we use the scientific method to innovate in the workplace? How many of you, when was the last time that any of you have had the chance to run an experiment in your business? or to explore something new. It's not that difficult to innovate. The problem is that as we grew up as professionals, we became addicted to efficiency. Which means doing the same thing, but better. You know, it's iterating by perfecting what we're doing even more so. You know? But let me tell you one thing. In innovation, Perfection is not allowed. Perfection is completely overrated. Okay. We're going to go through some ideas about innovation, but, but one of the things that I want to you know, put as well into perspective is, is, is the following. Let me just you know, give no, uh, uh, some sort of step back and try to analyze the context where we're operating in, in here. You know, the concept of operating and living in a developing country for me, means less. Of, it's less about our level of income per capita, or what is called the gross domestic product per capita. But it's really about having a lot of poor, poor people. A lot, you know, more than 30, 45, 50 percent. As formidable as Brazil has has been in terms of their development, or other countries, still Brazil. You know, is a country with brutal extremes in, in terms of wealth and poverty. You know, but you know, at the end of the day, poverty is more than just the deprivation of income, but so the deprivation of basic and fundamental capabilities. Which means that a poor person, you know, cannot have access to education, and that makes it harder to go out of poverty. Now, innovation introduces technical and organizational knowledge in the economy. You, know, you cannot innovate without knowledge. But anybody will say, well, you know, it's knowledge so high tech, you know, it's, it's the technology sector, ICT, nothing further from the truth. We think that Apple, you know, has accomplished all these innovations because it's a very high-tech company. Let me tell you one thing. Apple is not high-tech. All of the technology that, that's embedded in Apple, you can actually pick it up from the shelf. What Apple has been done, doing for the last five years has actually been that he has developed the best insight and foresight on what the customer wants. So really innovation should be first and foremost customer centric, especially in our countries. You know? Now it is innovation is the key driver for growth. Okay? A lot of policies could actually be enforced and everything, but if we don't innovate collectively, we won't be able to either increase our level of income, 
in, an equi in, a, in a very equitable fashion at a national level. Now, this is a very important chart. I just hope that you can take a look at it. But this is very important. Look, here we have basically the levels of GDP per capita based on 2000, uh, in, in numbers of 2008 of different countries, you know, 5,000, 10,000. And this is the, the growth of the real GDP per capita, you know, in the last eight, nine years of a set of countries. For me, it is interesting to see how countries, different countries, grow in different, with different pace and with, in, in, in different matters. Look what's going on. You know, it's interesting what's happening in China. Look at this. China has a fairly low GDP per capita, but look at the growth rate. You know, and this is analyzed composed average growth rate. 12.04 percent. China. In the last 19 years, it has been growing double digit in average every single year. They're doing something good. You know, productivity is about sustaining, you know, improvements in levels of prosperity in countries. What's going on in countries like Vietnam? You know, Vietnam, you know, if you are here over the years, you will be pushed to this part of it, you know. Um, Indonesia has had decent amounts of growth, you know. Mexico, not so much. Mexico is actually quite, quite stalled there. It has been like this for maybe 15 years or so. But look at countries like Norway. Okay. There are small countries, Norway is very small, with a very high level of income. But even though they have high levels of income, look at the growth. Whatever you're operating over there in that area, okay, basically in that area, that means you're an extremely productive country. Okay? Now, the question here is, what do you think is Suriname? It's not there. Where do you place Suriname? This region, this region, that region, or over here? Look at the body. This is the body. There it is. Unfortunately, we are in this area. This week, actually, it was uh, Monday, right? No, was this week or last week? Thursday, yes. That the World Economic Forum actually released the rankings of the countries in terms of, uh, of uh, the level of competitiveness. Uh, to my surprise, uh, Surinam didn't participate. Uh, uh, but, but I don't know who we will speak to, but certainly it is very important that you guys keep participating in this, in, in this exercise. But let me tell you one little thing about what happened you know, globally. Six of the top ten countries are very small countries. Okay. Number one, Switzerland. Number two, Sweden. Number three, Singapore. Norway. Finland. All these small countries are very high over there. So the point here is the big giants like the United States, now they're in fourth place. One of the things that I kept listening 